How do you run Jenkins Steps in parallel? Has this ever happened to you? Your Jenkins build is taking a long time to complete, and you're starting to get pressure from your team to get it to run and complete faster. And just about this time, you realize that you can run your Jenkins job in parallel. In this video, we're going to look at different ways that you can use parallel inside of a declarative pipeline. We're going to start small, and then we're going to make it a little bit more complex so you can decide which level is right for you. So here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller. It's version 2.303.2. When this controller was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. After the installation was complete, I went back and installed the Blue Ocean plugin so we can see visually what our stages are going to look like in parallel. Attached to this controller, I have three different agents. I have Agent 1, which is a CentOS 7.9 based agent. I have a Mac agent which is based on Mac OS, and have a Pi, which is running Raspbian. All three of these agents have Go 1.17.2 installed on them. In this video, we're going to be using a sample repository. The link to that repository is down in the description of this video. So first off, let's go ahead and create a sample pipeline pointing at the sample repository. So I'm going to click on New Item. I'm going to call this Jenkins Example Parallel and click oh, select pipeline, and now click OK. And for our pipeline script from SEM, we're going to use git. The repository URL, again, down in the description, is going to be this. And the branch is main. And finally, the script path is going to be Jenkins file dash one. Now let's go ahead and click on Save here. I'm not going to run it just yet. Let's go take a look at this repository. This is a basic Go CLI repository based on using Cobra. And that's not included in part of this video, so if you're interested in learning more about that, leave some comments down below. But what we can see here, very basic, I have four different Jenkins files that we're going to be going through today. We're going to be starting with one and working our way to four. And from here, what we're going to see looking just at Jenkins file dash one, is I've already set up the starting point for where we're going to be today. I have a declarative pipeline, the global agent is set to none, and then I've set up two stages. I've set up a stage build and a stage run. Within both build and run, I've set up parallel, and we're going to be building this Go CLI on the three different architectures. CentOS AMD64, I have a Raspberry Pi that's ARM v6, and I have a Mac that's running AMD64. So this way, we're able to take our Go CLI and build it for each of these architectures separately, but within the same pipeline. So during our build phase, what we're going to be doing is we have separate stages, each one for each architecture. We're selecting which agent we want this stage to run on, and then we're saying go install dpctl, which is the name of the little Go CLI that we're running today. And then once we get down to the run stage, we're just doing the same thing, using the same labels, and then running dpctl just to see the output of dpctl. So let's go ahead and flip back over to our controller, and let's run this job. So we'll click on Build Now, and we'll see that this is starting right up, moving right along. But since we have multiple agents, Reading this console output is a little confusing because we see here we have the Linux AMD and Linux ARM v6. Each one of these are just all interleaving in as we're going down through this build log. So that's the reason why that I installed BlueOcean so we can visualize this a little bit better. So let's go back up to example parallel. I'm going to click on, let's just go down here to one since it's already completed and click on open BlueOcean. That way we go right into the run for number one. And we can see here in parallel, nothing real surprising if you've seen parallel before. Here's the big build stage. And then we have our Darwin AMD 64. We have Linux, and then we have Linux ARM v6. And the same thing for the run stage. If we click into build Darwin, we see here when we run go install dpctl, it just does the go install. We'll see that for each of these stages as well. Now notice what we have here. 
we have checkout and go install, but once we get over into the run stage, we also have a checkout. Now think about this for just a moment. There's no reason for me to do another checkout in my run stage because over in the build stage, I've already done the build. So one of the first improvements that we're going to make in our Jenkins file is we're going to disable default checkout because as we've moved through our pipeline, our build stage has agents, our run stage has agents. And by default, every time you go into a new agent, you're going to be getting a checkout because of declarative. So let's go back over to our repository and go back over to Jenkins file two. And what we can see here is that we've added in an option to skip the default checkout. But by skipping the default checkout, that now means that I explicitly have to do a checkout SCM within my build stage. So checkout SCM for all three of these because I'm on ARM v6, Darwin AMD, and Linux AMD. But then once we get down into our run stage, we're just going to be running DPCTL like we did before. So let's go ahead and go back over to our job. I'm going to flip back over to Classic View and do a reconfiguration. And let's look at Jenkins file two. And let's go ahead and click on build now and see how this changes. So we've clicked on build now. I'm going to go ahead and open up in Blue Ocean. And it's already complete because this runs really fast. If we take now a look at build, we see our checkout for Darwin, but now when we take a look at the same thing for Darwin over here for run, there is no checkout. It's just the running of DPCTL. Now on my agents, I have set up these stage names to be the actual labels on the agents. Now you may not have done that, but here's one important thing to realize. Notice I have Darwin AMD 64, Darwin AMD 64. What could happen if I had multiple agents with the same label? So let's say I had five different Macs, all with Darwin AMD 64. There is no guarantee that the actual machine that I had when I ran the build is going to be the same machine that I have when I get to the run, based on how Parallel works within Declarative. This is where sequential stages comes into play. Now you may be asking yourself, what is sequential stages? I'm so glad you asked. Let's go and take a look at our Jenkins file three. And with Jenkins file three, what we have is a big stage on the outside, build and run. And then internally, we are doing three different parallel stages. We have Linux ARM v6, Linux AMD 64, and Darwin AMD 64. And what's happening here, again, stage parallel, we have three parallel stages. Within each of these stage items here, we have the agent, and then we have another reference to stages. So we have the big stages up top, the global stages, but with sequential stages, we're able to put more stages underneath each of these stage blocks. Now, one of the interesting side effects of how sequential stages works, and the documentation for sequential stages is down in the description, is that every one of these stages that happened here are going to use this agent. So we'll do our go install and then do dpctl on each of these different stage blocks. Now notice one other thing that I changed here. I've removed the options to skip default checkout because I don't need to worry about that anymore. By default, with declarative pipeline, the first stage within a block is going to do the checkout. But because I have stages here, this stage is going to do the checkout. And once it gets down to the run, it's not going to check out because it was already checked out up here on this agent. Let's go modify our job and see what happens. Again, heading back over to classic, configure. And let's take a look at Jenkins file three. and go ahead and click on Build Now. And let's go ahead and head over to Blue Ocean. We'll click into three. 
And notice how this differs from the previous examples. Previously, we had two long parallels, but now our parallel, instead of being from top to bottom, is now left to right. So sequential stages provides us the ability to stay on the same agent throughout that whole run. But what if there were extra steps that I wanted to run for some of these agents that I didn't want to run for others? That's also where sequential stages helps us. Let's go take a look at Jenkins file four. So we go back up here and head to four. Now what you're going to see is we still only have two stages within our Linux ARM v6, just build and run. But for Linux AMD, we've added in three new stages, unit test, load test, and deploy to storage, which again, these are just echoes for the moment as a placeholder. And for Darwin, we've added one new stage for unit test. So let's go back over to our job, make a modification and see what this looks like. Go here, go down to four. And click save. And let's go ahead and do a build now. And then we'll click into four and open Blue Ocean. And what we can see here now is that for Darwin, we have three stages. For our Linux AMD, we have five stages, whereas our Linux ARM still stays with just two stages. And this provides us the ability to do whatever we need for specific architectures in this case. And before we get to the end, let's say we had another stage out here where we were going to do something, we would want to make sure that all of these passed before we did the next thing. In this case, we happen to just be ending. Now, just to prove that there isn't anything fishy going on here, I'm going to go make a change to my CLI. And instead of it just saying hello from DPCTL, we're going to change this to echo out the runtime OS and the runtime architecture. So let's make sure that this all imports the way I want it to, which it should here momentarily. We'll just say runtime. And that looks good. And let's go ahead and commit this. Uh, add OS info. Then we're going to go ahead and push this up to our repository. And then once it's up there, let's go back over here. We're just going to run this job again. So I'll go ahead and click on run. And then let's check out what the output is from our number five run. So once it renders here, what we'll see is under our run stage for Darwin, we see that it's hello from Darwin on AMD 64. For Linux AMD, it's Linux AMD 64. And finally for our Pi, it's Linux on ARM. Now, what are some of the reasons why you might want to run your jobs in parallel? Number one, you might have a lot of really powerful machines with a lot of CPU capacity that are being underutilized. By using that excess CPU capacity based on the types of jobs you're building, maybe such as C++ builds, you could complete those job runs faster. Secondly, you might just have a lot of spare build agents. Maybe they're not high CPU, maybe they're not high memory, but you just have a lot of them. By having that excess capacity, you can bring that capacity in to your jobs and spread your workload out. Finally, another really good reason to use Parallel is you've got a case to where you have long running integration tests or long running security scans. In the cases to where the results of those tests do not affect what you actually do with your artifacts, you can use those things in parallel as a fire and forget. So you start your job, you have one flow that's going off and doing your build and run much like what we were doing, but you might branch off immediately and submit that to a security scan because you're just wanting to see the numbers at the end and you're not gonna be using the results of that security scan to determine whether or not your job is going to continue or not. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button and ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.